Hello. And welcome back to my Base in a Box. This is the final episode. Um, and why is it the final episode? Because basically I have taken this world as far as I can take it. And for a variety of reasons, um, it would be better to start with a clean sheet of paper than to try and take a rubber to this one. So, while you've been away, I have been running a load of benchmarks. I've basically been going into this world, making a change, saving out the save file, running it with factorial double dash benchmark, and uh, seeing what the performance implications were. So just to run through these, I covered some of them last time. Um, so the raw base in a box, I was getting uh, 32 ticks a millisecond. Um, I then took out various logics. Some of that helped, some of it didn't. I then killed all the biters and turned off pollution, and that won me about 20%. So biters were worth about 20% of my UPS on this map. Different map, may have been different. I am putting down a massive solar field at the moment. So again, some of the, some of the UPS is going into that solar field, but I'm just saying 20% of this map were biters with a, a slight sliver of pollution. Okay, then um, I don't know if you remember, but I designed the smelter arrays to have um, clocked inserters and I actually ended up using clocked inserters in a couple of the other builds as well red circuits and blue circuits each of the smelter modules had their own clock so I took the world with the biters killed and for copper shared the clock across the entire copper uh, so one clock across all the builds. I did the same for iron, the same for steel. Left all the other clocks, but you know they, they are the major ones. And that was worth 10% of the remaining UPS. So after the biters were killed, I could get 10% off the dead biter UPS by sharing clocks. So writing down, making a clock and having it tick every single cycle is incredibly expensive apparently in Factorio. Now it, it should be dead cheap. It's one of those operations where um, where the game environment should be compiling it down to a simple counter. It should just be taking the frame count from the game and applying a delta, but it clearly is not. It's doing other stuff and it's expensive. Um, the overhead there is in running the clocks. I wondered if there was any overhead in using the filter inserters with having the filter set occasionally in ticks. So I rebuilt the smelters to use um, stack inserters. I stripped out the wire. For that, I used a couple of mods. So upgrade planner, which you are probably all aware of. Um, here's my upgrade. It just upgrades from uh, stack in filter stack inserters to stack inserters. So I ran that across the builds. Um, and then the other one you're probably not aware of is this tool here. It is the wire stripper mod. Um, if you hold this down over a pole, let's do these two, it strips out the copper cable. It actually strips out apparently the copper cable of anything it touches. All right, so let's put the copper back in there. That's better. Um, but the other function with it is if you hover it over a power pole and press shift, it strips out any colored cables. Uh, so I used that basically to strip off. Um, have I really messed this up that badly? I sort of don't care because this this save is going in the bin after we've done this. Okay. Oh, it'll be this one down here, won't it? Right, let's try again. And there needs to be one going there to... Yeah, wire stripping is really powerful. Um, use with caution. Uh, anyway, 
those two mods let me do those updates without needing to rebuild everything and I was able to do it in the Megabase world which is quite important because I was benchmarking things in a real world rather than in a, a benchmark build. So in the past I've been benchmarking various inserter builds and clocked inserters and things in little sandbox worlds. Um, yeah, so I'm getting extremely different results here. It's partly the scale I'm building at, and I think it's partly it being a real world with all the other things going on. Um, so to recap, uh, stripping out the clocked inserters entirely, replacing them with dumb stack inserters, that was worth 5% win over the um, shared clocks. Um, it was worth about 3% extra compared to um, clocks everywhere. So uh, sharing the clocks, killing the biters and all the other changes got us down uh, to 68% of the overhead. Getting rid of the clocks entirely on smelting got us down to 65% of the overhead. Okay. And of course, our FPS UPS right now is down at 30. Because no matter what I do, when I'm logged in and looking at this thing, it runs at 30 because it hates me. Anyway, um, so what's the plan? Um, I'm going to go and spend a bit of time in the um, more science world. Um, I'd like to get that moved on. I'd at least like to get it into the SpaceX phase before I start doing anything new. But probably what I'm going to do then is start up a world um, which is unashamedly purely intended to build a megabase. Uh, so I don't care about the phase getting to launching the first rocket in, in this new world. That's not the point. The point is to be able to build as quickly as possible a megabase. So I will probably be stacking up all the quality of life mods. The megabase itself will not use any uh, mechanic altering mods, but uh, everything to allow me to build it, I'm going to be pretty, pretty open to using any mods which help me with that. So I will probably have a bunch of things like upgrade planner, uh, the planes again, Quick start, I'll probably have the uh, Power Armor Mark III and IV around, um, and so on and so on, because this new series will be about going from 0 to 10 RPM as quickly as it is possible to get, with the 10 RPM base being mm -hmm. um, as vanilla, well, vanilla, basically. So... Uh, Everything to get me there, I'm going to use all the quality of life mods necessary. I'll use RSO because this world didn't use RSO. And that one of the problems is that I just don't have the um, resources to keep this going. So if we look down here, we now have trains queued up at our iron. This started out at 53 million. Um, see if I can... That's now down to 32, right? We, we just do not have megabase scale resources. So... Um, I'm going to re-roll the world with RSO, all those quality of life mods, and we will see if we can get from zero to megabase. Oh, I'm also going to launch it with no biters because we, we don't care. We're just trying to build big. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do in a new series. But this series, I am going to say sayonara. I am going to say farewell. It has been really good fun a really good learning experience um let's see how are we doing for rockets see if we can find something that would give us an indication of rocket speed right so reds are being ma being made at 2.3k i'm looking for yeah science has been made at 2k for the last 10 minutes for the last 1.4 here where are we? 1.1. So we've been 
succeeding on a mega base scale of build for an hour, 10 hours, 1.2 averaging. Yes, this is our iron limitation. But for 10 hours, we've been sustaining a, a um, mega base scale science production um, with all these problems. So I'm calling this world a success. Uh, just before we go, I want to show you the absolutely awesome scale of rail. Um, there are things I would do differently with this rail second time, but the, the rail is not showing up as being a significant problem in the performance. So I'm not going to address that. Um, we are probably losing 10, 20 UPS just on this solar field being built. I just, I should probably never have slapped down something this big without supporting it with a factory that could provide all the materials quickly enough. Um, but again, you know, it's been done. I can't undo it. And this world isn't the appropriate world to undo it in. So I took a vanilla world, I carved out this much space, I got it to megabase scale, it topped out at 2k, it's fallen back to 1k because of resource limitations. I'm out of resources, I would have to um, explore so far into the wilds um, that it wouldn't be worth doing. Just before we go, um, quit this game. Yep, I do want to quit. Play, load game. Okay, where are we? So, um, I wanted to show something, but I apparently don't have it in this. Okay, um, exit out of this. Okay, I think I might have this in my vanilla Factorio build. Let's see if we can find it in here. Um, I have uh, two or three Factorio directories, and then for each one I have several mod, mod directories set up. Um, it's the only way I can keep saying. Okay, so play load. Um, iron smelting redux. Okay. I thought I would show you this. This is sort of my parting gift. Okay, so um, this is the iron smelters with the clocks and all that stuff in a world. We have creative mode reduction of all. And we have creative mode sync for plates. But this is my smelting. And it's got the right number of trains. So it has two trains per station for both stations and it runs and it produces peak throughput. It's great. Okay. And you can see all this stuff. It's running exactly as you would hope. Um, I've got no, this was just to see how things worked. And I've got the nice separate tracks type stuff going on here. This, this is the tracks as it is in the um, base in a box world. Okay, so they cross over. You can see the crossing, but there's no real contention most of the time. Okay. So let's load up this one. Here we go. This was me having a bit of a design play. Um, so let's, I don't want to give away the punchline too early. All right, so this is the build we had before, except I have been playing around with alternatives. So do you see this long train here? Okay, so I'm running 282 trains. This is a 28282 train. So it fills up the front carriages from the 28 stop. Then it fills up the back carriages. Right, and you can see this is sticking out here. We've got room to park an entire train in here because that's part of the way I designed the train stations, the modules. So it's now filling up the back. Okay, so it 
comes down here, goes in. Okay, now, then it goes in here, it offloads the front eight carriages. What I was trying to do was come up with a way that we could move a lot more ore in, in fewer trains. However, you may have noticed when this came in, the bots were not flying. That's because they'd run out of ore. So although this unloads the front of the train, then it moves forwards, unloads the back of the train. And although we're loading up the train with six inserters back in the other site, it's not supplying ore fast enough because it's unloading eight carriages, then moving forward, then unloading the other eight carriages, right? And when it unloads these, it potentially buffers up these chests um, not too badly because they're being unloaded roughly at the rate that they are consumed. But when it drives off, because the ore is being offloaded roughly at the speed it's consumed and there is no second train here, this runs out of ore. Okay, so my first idea of doing a cut and shut on the train doesn't work. Then I thought, what would happen if we brought in a, a train with um, two, two times or slightly over two times the ore and we unloaded the whole train, but did it within essentially the same footprint? Okay, so those are these designs. So first of all, if we just... Okay, I'm going to have to travel down because of uh, radar coverage. Down we go. Okay, so the question is, how many locomotives do you need to go around a corner? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to go around a hairpin. Then for the wide loop, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five to go around this wide loop. Um, the problem is this wide loop is wider than the whole of the center of our smelting build, which is not great. This is um, the off to one side match type loop. Okay, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine locomotives. Fair enough. But it's very asymmetric in how the, the wagons end up. It's a possibility. Um, so if we're doing a two to one, that would mean we wanted 18 carriages. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. So that's 16. But we could do that and that, that would give us 18. Um, turns out when you line that up against a build, uh, it sticks out the bottom, sticks out the top, which isn't great, okay? Um, we want our materials to be unloaded centrally. However, the benefit of doing this kind of build where you come in at the bottom, loop around, come out again, is that this can be an iron ore rail and that means we can bring in the plates rail with without ever interacting with the iron rail so that actually seems quite good from a, a design point of view we are completely segregating the one rail network from the other by introducing this loop so the idea is what can we do with that so here's a slightly better thought through version so these trains are weird. I mean, I, I totally get they're weird trains because they have all the locomotives in the middle, not at the end. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 locomotives. Sorry, 16 carriages, 10 locomotives. Overkill on the locomotives, but you need them to get around this tight hairpin. But once you do that, you have a build where all 16 carriages are within the same footprint as the old eight. Now, the problem with this is we've had to move the build sideways to accommodate the hairpin, which is not nice. But if we make the train a bit longer, so this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty-two carriages, ten locomotives, which is near enough two to one. This lets us keep our tight build. Our build is still squished in from the sides. It's actually only four tiles wider than the old one. We have rail that comes in, 
sorry, rail that comes in, crosses the out track once, goes up, around, down, and out. Then this train can come in, down there, out, and off. We even have room here for the logistics train. So as long as the logistics is supplied within the um, factory rather than in the outside world, which it should be, let's be honest, we're fine. Then um, one of the design things in my previous world which worked really well that I do want to pull forward into any future build was having a train stacked up waiting to come in and pick up the next lot of stuff. So if this is the train that's picking up the current lot of stuff, if we have this wiggle that goes around the hairpin, this actually is enough room for a 282 train to stack exactly one train. And there's room for the fuel logistics and the bot logistics to sit here. Um, sorry, that's left over from a previous thing. There we are. And everything can be signaled correctly. And you can see there's this one big block here where our um, 11, 10, 11 train goes. And yeah, it's just really nice. And this stacks on the back of this one fairly closely. So um, I think this is going to be my smelting design for the next world. And uh, if we go down here, this is the this is a way you can design the rails to come in. So this would then go down onto the, a four lane bus or a two lane bus, or probably just a two lane that would go out here forever and ever and ever, and occasionally spur off to find iron. This rail here, so it comes in, goes up, goes around, down and out again. Never touches this plates rail, which comes in, goes into the stacker, you have one queued up behind, goes in here, turns around, comes up, out, and down here, and out. Beautiful. The two networks are completely segregated. Um, we can stack one plates train up the pipe waiting to go in. Uh, because this rail here will only ever be taking smelting, sorry, ore trains, we don't need any stacking here. We just, they can stack on the line. Um, and as we build up more and more of these, we'd have more and more ore trains. And because they're long and they have the wagons in the middle, we can hairpin them, which means when we're loading them up at mines, we can also hairpin them there. They're weird ass trains, but they actually solve the problem. So this is what I'm gonna do in the brand new world. Um, this is definitely the design I'm gonna be going with um, give it a go, because like, you know, what's there to lose? Um, so that's my plan. Um, this probably will not happen for weeks or possibly months. Uh, I am going to take a break from mega base building and concentrate, as I said, on the, uh, more science mod. I will, when I've got close to finishing the more science mod, I may start up a new megabase world specifically for building a megabase. When more science finishes, I will probably load up a new comedy world, uh, Dangerous maybe, or I don't know, something. Um, but I think there's a little bit to go before that world is done. Um, anyway, thank you very much for following on. There's been like a hundred and something episodes of this, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I never expected it to be this long. So for those of you who've watched through it, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm not going away, but this series is. So uh, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you again in a different world soon. Bye-bye.